Uganda's central bank has left its key lending rate at 9%, adding that economic activity was moderating. The combination of slowing global economic activity and domestic factors like falling tourism and export earnings in the first 10 months of this year were expected to contribute to a slowing economy. In October, the central bank unexpectedly slashed its key rate by 100 basis points to 9%, saying the move was to help revive the sagging economy. Economic growth was forecast at 5.5% to 6% this year, sustained into 2020. Like much of East Africa, for the last three months, Uganda has seen heavy rains that triggered widespread flooding and deadly landslides. And South Africa Power Utility ESCOM has warned that it may continue rolling blackouts throughout the week as power cuts enter the fifth day. ESCOM says it's cutting 2,000 megawatts from the grid today, extending the electricity shortages. Plant breakdowns resulted in the utility losing as much as 12,000 megawatts on Sunday, debilitating power outages in Africa's most industrialized economy have emerged as the biggest threat to economic growth well, let's talk to one of our correspondents there in South Africa, uh, Katleho Lekoti, to bring us up to speed with the situation and expectations for this week. Hello, Katleho. Thank you for joining us. So how are you guys battling with the past situation? ESCOM has just uh, warned of extension of load shedding. A very good afternoon to you. Indeed, ESCOM has implemented stage four of load shedding today, and this has been going on for at least uh, five days, as you rightly uh, stated there. And, and this uh, is, is mainly uh, affected uh, businesses uh, that are, are mainly trading here in South Africa, and with a whole lot of people also having to make amendment, amendments here and there as to accommodate the rolling blackouts that ESCOM have actually implemented. Now, the state-owned um, company provides about 95% um, of South Africa's electricity, and of course it's struggling with about um, 454 billion rand debt and declining revenue. The government has come up with a lot of measures to rescue it, including unbundling the entity, although the union has kicked against it, uh, you know, this move. What is the position now with that um, rescue plan? Uh, most definitely, unions were not pleased at, at all uh, at that announcement that was made by President Cyril Ramaphosa in the State of the Nation address earlier this year, that ESCOM will be split into three uh, parts, uh, this mainly being a generational capacity, uh, this also being, being transmission, and also uh, also also its transition generational capacity, and, 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 and also uh, coming forward to say that, you know, we are against the move by the government to actually uh, unbundle ESCOM as this is going to lead uh, to a lot of jobs that are going to be lost here on the ground. Uh, and also, ESCOM now, having recently appointed uh, a new CEO in place, uh, unions now coming forth to say that, you know, if this is the man that will actually help uh, ESCOM get out of the mess that it is in, uh, uh, they actually will support him. But they're not happy with the fact that, you know, ESCOM is going to be unbundled, saying that this is going to lead to a lot of uh, job losses. Now, another government entity that made headlines last week was the South African Airways, with the government announcing it has placed it under business rescue, a form of bankruptcy protection. Any development on that? Most definitely, uh, you know, uh, unions are rallying behind uh, the fact that ESCOM, at least government, has come forward. The Public Enterprises Ministry has come forward uh, to, to help SAA to keep her afloat because uh, the, the, the unions were up in arms uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago about what is happening there at SAA. And now saying this two billion rand uh, rescue plan that uh, the government is actually putting into SAA will help it keep afloat. And this is something that... Of course, workers' unions are, are welcoming. You must have had some kind of conversations with people on the street. What are their views about these moves by the government? Uh, people are not pleased at all, uh, you know, about the fact that most of the state-owned enterprises, SAA, ESCOM, uh, DINEL, uh, you know, they've actually been struggling financially and to, to keep operationally as well. Uh, they've been struggling, and this filters all the way down uh, to the men and women on the ground, those that are trading, uh, you know, they're feeling the pinch, and those that also, you know, day-to-day, uh, uh, -day, depending on a day-to-day, -day, uh, uh, you know, supply of, of electricity and a day-to-day, -day, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
air, 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 airplane moves. Uh, they're actually not pleased at all. But one thing that you know most of them are, are chucked about is the fact that uh, you know this will, will will go a long way in saving jobs because if indeed uh, the uh, government did not come forward to give uh, uh, you know uh, your state-owned enterprises that are, are really struggling financial assistance, uh, this will also come down to to jobs being lost on the ground as businesses will try to by all means you know keep it afloat and this will mean cutting numbers and cutting down on those people that are working with those entities. So how are the markets, currency and the equities reacting to these developments this Monday being the first trading day of the week? At the end, you know, a, a rally very, very firm, uh, very early in the day. Uh, you know, we saw uh, this this morning uh, trading against 1469 to the US dollar, trading against the euro being at 1927 and the a pound as well being 1620. Uh, so uh, uh, the rand firmly, but also, you know, uh, uh, economists coming forward to warn that, you know, rolling blackouts that are continuing will also end up uh, harming the rand in, t in terms of how, you know, businesses are meant to function if the rand is is not if, if the, the electricity is not or power is, is out, uh, but the rent is, is, is actually doing firmer this morning. So, what is the outlook and expectations for the week? Are there companies we have to keep an eye on? Yeah, most definitely uh, 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 experts are coming forward, economists saying that, you know, looking at companies like SAPI uh, that are, are doing very well on the JSE, companies like uh, uh, Fast Rand are doing very well, Exaro, they're doing very, very well on the on the JSE stock market. So we're expecting that the outlook can actually be on a positive trajectory. Also something that we, we can take caution of is, of course, if the rolling blackouts persist, uh, then that's when we can say that the economy is going to be affected. But as we stand, the rent is, is actually firmer against the major currencies around the world. All right, Kat Le Hove, uh, for those, um, thank you for those updates. Enjoy the rest of the day. Kat Le Hove is um, our correspondent there in South Africa. Meanwhile, Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, PRESA, has been placed under administration. The Minister of Transport, Fikili Mabula, has also announced that the interim board of the company has been dissolved with immediate effect. Mr. Bongizwe Mpondo, Managing Director and Founder founder of transport company Safiri has been appointed as an administrator of the Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa. Prasa is a South African state-owned enterprise responsible for most passenger rail services in the country. Analysts say Prasa has deep-rooted problems and merely replacing an interim board with a permanent one would not solve the problems. And the chief executive officer and exploration director of Tulo Oil, Paul Magdad has resigned after a slew of operational setbacks, marking the exit of the old guard after founder Aidan Heavy departed last year. Paul Magdad and Exploration Chief Angus Marcos resigned by mutual agreement and with immediate effect. Paul Magdad and Exploration Chief uh, both have been stalwarts of the company for over a decade, presiding over discoveries from West Africa to Guyana, but also a 90% slide in the share price since 2012. The shares tumbled 43% in London this morning. They have dropped 55% this year. The executive departures come after a year of disappointments of Tulo, where technical difficulties have hampered output in Ghana. Projects in Uganda and Kenya have faced delays and results from wells in Guyana missed expectations. The company reduced its 2019 production forecast several times as the glitches in Ghana dragged on. And that's the wrap on the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago.